Okay, so to talk about this Napoli match uh, in, in a smaller context, to just talk about the, the match itself, I think it's summed up by two players in, in particular, right? That also kind of are a referendum on the whole squad as a total. Ferran Torres and Oscar Magetha, where things were good and bad for both of them in different ways. And, uh, you know, I think Oscar Magetha, I, I think, you know, I think of this match as a spider web, right? Especially when I do the five headlines. And to me, all the talking points kind of come off of either of those two players. So I want to kind of keep these ideas separate and start with Baron Torres here. And, you know, the goal, the PK coming after he had missed all those chances is one thing, but the seven misses is certainly really telling. However, uh, this is going to be a full fledged. If you don't want me to hear, if you don't want to hear me defend Ferran Torres, I say fast forward, probably <laughs> give me about, give me about two and a half minutes. Okay. Because people already doing the referendum of the 55 million and Pep Guardiola is laughing. And of course, and uh, Chiki Bajira staying is a genius. Again, he sold Barcelona damaged goods or whatever, 21 years old. I'm not going to start to talk about, or I'll have a referendum on his 55 million euro contract until sometime in the second half of next season, or maybe his third year. Because there's a big difference to me, and I've said this, and I've been pretty adamant about this on the pod for years. There's a big difference between my first, the first match I ever saw Coutinho play when I said at the very astutely that I'm not sure how he's going to fit. It doesn't make sense to me. And the same thing goes for Antoine Griezmann. The same thing can go for other players that clearly just weren't at the level, right? Like Douglas or one of those examples, right? Or, or even Marlon, Marlon, who would, who would come over um, from Fluminia. So it's like, I can name a, a hundred players or whatever in the last 15, 20 years. I mean, not that many, but at least 15 to 20, we, they, in their first match or their first few months, you're like, oh, okay, it's not going to work. Ferran Torres being 21, coming from Man City, having broken his foot, not being match fit. I'm going to start to throw those things away because I think he is regaining his match fitness and I think he is probably healed. So that's going to be less and less of an excuse. However, the reason why he's in so many good spots to finish is because he's really good at finding space. Like we've said, whether he is going to be the number nine or the left winger, that's a good question because the reason I, in the headline said he was a master of none because he's able to find space both on the wing and at a number nine, but he's just not clinical enough to be a number nine at this point, at least. And on the left wing, he does get lost a little bit. And inverting only works like Gabi and Jordi Alba seem to have a good understanding. And don't give me that La Masia stuff just uh, about that. But Gabi and Alba seem to have a good understanding of when Alba gets forward, when Gabi drops in, when he inverts. And that spacing was just, it was off today. It was off between Torres and Alba. It just, it wasn't there yet. If it is, that Ferran Torres inverted winger thing is going to make a lot more sense, but it just didn't in the first, especially in the first half today. But he was still, still all that said, finding the spots that he needed to pop up and to, to miss seven chances. You only miss seven chances if you put yourself in a position to score seven times, right? And yes, the one in the 88th minute, that reminded me, I was getting flashbacks of Dembele at, against Liverpool, right? That, that's how bad that one was, where it is 1v1. You could not put the tie away, but you could put yourself in the driver's seat by putting that goal in, in the, 80th minute, uh, the 88th minute. But Xavi, I think, you know, I'm going to support the manager here. And he mentioned in post game, Luis Suarez had a hard time in the first few months. And they said he had no ability to score goals coming over from Liverpool, where he was uh, reasonably, you know, 75 million euros uh, for that signing. And it's true that that Barca shirt weighs a lot for a player that grew up in Valencia, that grew up uh, in Spain and is now playing for one of the two, you know, big giants. Uh, and so you could see what it meant to him, the emotion that he had after the game. He knows he messed up. And, and I think a player who's not capable of making the, of scoring those goals, a player who knows that he hasn't underachieved, but you know, it's one thing in this, no respect to Luke to, to young or to Martin Brothwaite, but, I wouldn't expect them to hang their head like that because they're not worth 55 million euros. And that's totally fair, right? Anything you get from them is a consolation. But we're putting a lot of pressure on Ferran Torres and pressure he deserves at 55 million. But to say he's already done or it's never going to work or whatever, that's crazy to me. And I'm going to still largely be in the Ferran Torres camp because, I mean, he could score a hat trick in his next game. He could score a brace next Thursday against Napoli. Because, again, the whole thing about missing is that you can eventually start to put him in, too. Um, and so I, I still trust in Ferran Torres. And if you had to tell me was this positive or negative in this game, I ended actually being positive. And, you know, his tears matter. His tears matter. Even though the crest fell off, you know, it, it, he, he wanted to kiss the crest during, after he scored the PK, but he, he wasn't wearing one because it, it, it fell off uh, in the first half there. But, yeah, I, I definitely am defending Ferran Torres here. Hey, if you don't want to hear somebody defend Ferran Torres again, you can skip <laughs> the next two, three minutes. I agree. I agree. 
it's going to sound crazy, but I think Ferran played great. If you take away the fact that his finishing was horrible and he knows that he's the first one. I was telling that on my stream after the game, like he, nobody has to tell Ferran Torres that he was horrible at finishing because he's the first one that knows. And you saw that as the game ended, he was crushed. But I think those tears were more of like, we say in Spanish, rabia, like angriness. Because he knows that he messed up. He knows that he should have come out with four goals out of the camp. No. But like you said, if you, I know that kind of sounds a little bit crazy, but if you take away the fact that he missed so many sitters, if you take into account everything else that goes into being a forward, he played great. He's great at finding himself in a position to have a clear goal-scoring opportunity, which he had a ton of. So at the end of the day, I'm not worried about that. And then on top of that, if there's one thing that I like, I like to call myself a little bit of like the doctor of uh, uh, a body language. And I like, like Shelby said, the shirt weighs a ton. Not ever. You can be great. Coutinho technically is amazing. Nobody can deny that. But clearly, he doesn't have the heart, the head, however you want to call it, to play for Barcelona, it weighed on him. It was too much of a pressure. Whether it was the transfer fee, whatever, tactically, I don't know. But it failed because he couldn't come with what comes with being a Barcelona player. Ferran, if there's one thing that I take, he was horrible before the penalty kick, finishing-wise. Before and after the penalty kick. And another player would go back into his shell like a turtle and let somebody else take the penalty kick. He took that ball within half a second and he was like, no, this is my ball. I'm going to take the penalty kick. Yeah. And I was like, Oh my God, I hope he's, I was more nervous yeah, right? yeah. for him that he was for him. I was like, Oh my God, please make it. I, Ferran, if you missed this, Oh my God. And he was in a way, again, I don't want people telling anybody that I said that, Chris, uh, Ferran is the next Cristiano Ronaldo and whatnot. But that reminded me a little bit of that Cristiano Ronaldo attitude that he might be horrible. He might suck for the entire game, but he's going to keep going, keep going. He might miss nine times, but he's going to score one. And to me, that was that Cristiano Ronaldo-esque attitude of someone that's like, no, I believe in me. Whether I'm that good whether I think I'm better than I am actually are, that's a whole different debate that we can have a, a, a different time. But he believes in himself. That was one of the reasons that he left Valencia. He wanted to be captain. They didn't think he deserved to be captain. He wanted a race. They didn't think he deserved the race. Whether you agree with that or not, he believes in himself. He went to City. In City, he wasn't being a fixed starter with Guardiola. He was part of the rotation. He wanted to be like, the guy on a big project, he left City to go to Barcelona. He believes in himself. Whether you think he's good enough to that extent, that's a whole different debate. But again, what I want to get at is that I love the fact that he took that ball without hesitation. He's like, I'm taking this penalty kick. This is mine. And the call, he, it was Jorginho-esque, the way he finished. He took that penalty with that little like jump and step. So again, He was horrible finishing-wise, but I think he did everything else great. And we got to take into account, I know we're in the business of like being reactionary, but he's coming back from broken foot. He was out since October. He's regaining match fitness. He was playing on the left with Jordi Alba. He hasn't played. He's played either on the right, then because of Adama being so great on the right, he's being shifted to the middle. And now because of Obama Young starting, He was, he was moved to the left. So technically he was playing in the least of the three positions that he feels more comfortable in. So take that into account. And, and again, I, I think he played great. Kill me, criticize me, but bar his finishing, I think he played great. Yeah, so there's a question here. I wonder how Shabby's going to proceed forward with this. I, I think he might believe that Obama Yang, maybe again, it could be match fitness for him too that he wasn't going to be able to defend on that left wing 
because Ferran Torres did a fair, fair job, a decent job defending on that left wing. And I, I think Xavi might not have believed in Aubameyang's ability to do that because I think ideally, because of Ferran's ability to drop in deep, it makes a ton of sense to have Aubameyang on the left wing and Ferran Torres as the nine and Adama Traore uh, on the right because Ferran Torres is also one who's going to make that near post run in a way that Aubameyang doesn't. Aubameyang is just going to try to pop up around the penalty spot. And that's, uh, so profile wise, it actually makes more sense moving forward, but there was certainly a reason. I, I'm, I'm interested to hear if somebody asked Xavi or a journalist uh, asked Xavi that in the coming days. And I, I think the more worrying thing though, and not worrying, but it's, it's worrying in a way that it could easily be resolved. And over time, like Pedri also missed one there. I, I mean, he was, obviously he was Barcelona's best player uh, in that match. It's obvious to me. And I think, again, that's his base level. He just, incredible he's fantastic um i'll compliment him later later but he still had that miss um nico was pretty indecisive he was asked to do so so much but he was indecisive in the final third and i think that's something i'm hoping that comes along with time for nico like he's putting you can see nico unlike gabi and pedri in a way that i said this last week too that nico is just putting it together game by game match by match you could see that the gears are turning on certain things and he's getting there, but the final third stuff is still a ways away. Um, and total as a team, it wasn't just Farron. He had seven misses, but the team as a, to- as a whole had 20 attempts to just four, but Napoli's four attempts were, uh, it was, but sorry, a shots on target were four to four as well. So that's the problem that Barca had 16 shots off target and four on target. Napoli had four shots and four on target. So, I mean, that tells you a lot about different things. It tells you that Barca's finishing wasn't clinical, but they were creating chances. And it tells you that Napoli were getting only a few chances, but they were making good use of those chances against that that Barca back line that we worried about.